Hello, I'm Ronnie Odom with Navigate Housing. Thank you for joining us for another Wednesday's Wisdom. Today we're talking with Jerithia Blake from the Birmingham Housing Authority, and we're specifically talking about case management in the FSS program. Welcome, Jerithia. Thank you. Thank you for coming. So today I want Jerithia to really explain to you um, some of the differences in case management styles that are needed for an FSS client. And I'm just going to let her go at it. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing that we look for when we um, are hiring our coordinators is we're looking for somebody who is willing to put their feet on the ground and start off running. They have to be a self-starter. They have to be hands-on. They have to be relatable. They have to be able to understand that everybody has a different background and a different story. And even if they may have not gone through it themselves, they have to be able to understand that this is this person's story and respect that story. Um, the different things about probably with being a case manager in the FSS program are under a public housing versus um, other agencies such as a medical social worker, our uh, DHR, our family social worker is we have so many different components that we're working with as far as like HUD regulations and we're also dealing with our public housing staff and our housing choice voucher staff. So ideally, our, our case managers have to be able to quickly understand the regulations that are under our, that we have to follow every day, mm -hmm. guidelines. They also have to be able to understand the procedures that the housing authority sets, as well as what HUD and our field office sets. And from there, they have to then now try to operate in those guidelines to help our residents. So they also have to know all the different resources from anything from healthcare to transportation to childcare to employment, they have to be able to understand that the residents coming in and set plans and set goals for those residents. So they now have to make sure that they're operating in those guidelines and providing those residents with a plan that will actually work. We don't want to set them up for failure. So basically they do that by learning how to write an individual training plan. They also learn how to I guess critical thinking plays a huge part in this. Mm -hmm. Like you kind of have to put yourself in your resident's shoes and kind of think like, if I wanted to be a nurse, could I get this done reasonably in four years? Um, if I wanted to, if I can't do it, what are my other options? So just making sure that they understand the resident. So we kind of deal with the resident as a whole. We can almost kind of say it's a holistic process. We're not just looking at their housing and how many kids they have and how much they make. We're also trying to figure out what those residents can do and what they're capable of doing because not every resident wants to be a nurse. Not every resident wants to uh, work at a plan. They all have different goals and we have to make sure that we apply ourselves accordingly. That's wonderful. So they're looking for people with empathy. <laughs> Number one, they have to have empathy. And then they're looking for someone that can kind of merge um, the practical side, learning how to do rent calculations with the more social service side, which is listening and then applying that listening. For example, I need to work, but I can't get to work. Oh, well, you need bus trans mm -hmm. transplants or um, bus in transportation. So um, I love that. Tell me more about how you actually, um, what am I looking for? Tell me more about how you actually um, support your workers? How would you actually support a caseworker in their career? Okay, we definitely, Mr. Lundy believes in training. He believes in education and providing our workers with the and tools. And let them know who Mr. Lundy is. Mr. Lundy is our president at the Housing Authority okay. of Birmingham District. Um, he believes in definitely providing you with the tools to do your work. You can't ask somebody to do something and they don't have the proper tools to do the work. So we believe in continuing the education. Also, I play as a support to our caseworker, making sure that, you know, they have so much that are being told to them and by their residents that I also try to make sure that it's not just them handling it, that I can also come in and anybody from the agency will come in and say, hey, this is how you handle this situation. Um, we usually ha actually have where our employees have come together and help us pull out programs for our residents by donating things or saying, hey, I know somebody who can do this. So we definitely don't want our case coordinators to feel like they are in there, on, in there by themselves because sometimes they feel like they have to put this cape on and they're the only one that's wearing the cape. But all of us are going to 
wear that cape with you. So we just want to make sure our coordinators have that education, they have that support, and that they also have freedom to make decisions on their own. Because in some cases, we don't know their individual cases. And so sometimes they know their clients well and they have to be able to say, well, hey, this is what I think will work for the residents. So I don't always just come in and tell them, hey, do this. I'll say, well, what do you think will work? Mm -hmm. And so I think those three things are important. And how does the um, ITSP play a role in their managing the, the, um, the case for their client? Okay. The ITSP is the individual, stands for Individual Training Service Plan. And basically, it kind of lays out what the resident's final goal is, and then those interim goals that they need to complete that goal. So the red coordinators have to ideally be able to say, okay, her final goal is to say to become independent of government assistance and to move into private sector. Well, we know that the resident needs a job, but let's say the resident needs to make a certain amount of money in order to live in a certain type of area. They will then have to focus on trying to figure out what job that that is or what job focuses in that annual income bracket. And then there they have to say, well, what kind of training do you need? And once they figure out the training, they then create a timeline based off how long that training takes and then how long an actual turnaround for them to get hired after completing that training. So that's where that ITSB comes in. It just kind of lays it out for them so that both the resident and the coordinator isn't in there trying to think of like, oh, you should have been had this done. It kind of gives them realistic deadlines. Mm -hmm. Well, like most housing authorities across the country, well, not most, but like a lot of housing authorities across the country, Birmingham is involved with the RAD. And I think they have an interesting twist on how they're using caseworkers to get involved with the RAD project. So would you tell us about that? Yes, so during our relocation, um, the caseworker has been tasked with being a assistant to the resident as far as moving them. So basically what our caseworker does, they come in, they go over the paperwork with the residents, kind of let them understand this is what's about to happen and we're gonna help you through this process. So from there, once they sign the paperwork and they let us know their concerns, um, where they're interested in staying, and if we're able to find a unit in one of the units, in one of our sites, and put them in there. Once we get the unit assigned, we then work with the property managers and make sure that the unit it meets the housekeeping rules, um, has met the turnaround. I'm trying to figure out what I'm trying to say. Uh, I guess make sure that they're up to code, and then from there we help them with the boxes, get the movers to come out, move them and we work all the way with them until they finally have moved into that new unit. So it's just kinda, they have our cell phones, so that's one thing, they're able to call us when they um, need anything, they can text us. And there have been times where we've actually gone on tours with our residents just to kinda help them understand that it is change and a lot of people change is a trigger. Mm -hmm. And just to kinda help them understand that you're not in this alone and we will walk you through this. And what has been the benefit for your um, caseworkers to to actually work so closely with um, clients that may not really be their clients, but could potentially be their clients? They're able to understand the public housing and the Section 8 side of it. They're able to understand um, how it all ties together, as well as, especially a lot of our new co our coordinators are new, so now they're getting a crash course in the housing industry. Mm -hmm. What, um, what is your structure for case management? Um, for example, do you require your, let's say that I'm your client and I'm not working. Mm -hmm. um, so would I be required to come in once a month for individual case management? Is there group case management involved? What is your sort of basic structure for case management? Right now, we ask for them to mandatory come in for once a month or provide an update with us once a month. Mm -hmm. But then we always tell our residents that in order for you to be successful, you have to put in more work. So we always encourage them to actually make appointments with their coordinators more than just once a month. Also, when we have our group meetings, that's where we bring in those different agencies. That's a way for us to get the information out them to them at one time instead of trying to individually contact 200 residents and say, hey, this is what's going on. Um, so, and then other things, once we know the residents, interest, we then may find information about 
things that are going on in the community that will benefit them. So we also try to make sure, again, that's why we have the cell phone, is like we can text them something or email them and say, hey, just wanted to let you know that you may be interested in this. Um, this is the information for you and things like that. You know, at some housing authorities that I've been to, they have um, case management where the client has their regular case manager, like if it's a public housing resident, they have a public housing case manager who does everything, and then the FSS person only handles the FSS program. I've also seen where the FSS case manager actually handles everything, all of the re-examinations, mm -hmm. etc. cetera. What, mo what modular do you all use? We actually do both. With public housing, they will have their public housing housing coordinator that does all their files as far as re-examination mm -hmm. and interims and anything like that. And then they have their FSS coordinator that just kind of handles the escrow and their case file. But on the Section 8, our housing trace voucher side, the specialist or the FSS coordinator does all of the recalculation and the FSS file. And it makes it easier for her to manage her file and know who's touching the file. Okay, mm -hmm. wonderful. And then finally, um, how has your PCC been involved with your case management or is there any coordination? Yes, um, our PCC is actually a huge blessing to us. Um, they definitely help us majorly with our golf tournament. They bring in those games, the prizes, the funds, but also they get involved with our monthly meetings as well as we can always refer our residents to, like we have a staffing, we have banks, we have um, the Jefferson County Workforce Development, we have Family Guidance Center. So if it's something that we can't do in-house, which is really what the FSS program is, is trying to make sure that we create those relationships and partnerships within the community. Our FSS advisory board members are the first people that we contact, like, hey, we have a resident that needs a job. Or we're having a session today, or not today, but we're having a session that we might think that you would be a great to speak on, and they will definitely come in and help us any way that we can. Great. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Nope, that's it. Okay. Well, that's the end of our Wednesday's Wisdom. Thank you so much for joining us. Please feel free to reach out if you need any further assistance. Thank you. Mm -hmm.